Good evening, everyone. I want to take a few minutes to encourage you this evening, show you a little something out of the Word of God to drop into your spirit, and I hope that um, it'll encourage you as you head into the weekend. We're just excited because we know that God is doing great things today, and we want to let Him know that He's worthy. And uh, I'll remind you of this when we get finished, but I want to, to let you know that we're going to uh, ask you to share this video. Um, matter of fact, if you want to take a moment and, and start a watch party, you can do that. Or uh, just want to let everybody know what we are doing this evening. And I also want to remind you that um, we are part of Unite 714. And um, I speak about that every time. Just want to remind you that, that as part of Unite 714, we are praying at 714 in the morning and 714 in the evening. There's no limit on how long you pray, uh, but we want to get everybody praying together. There's thousands of churches across the um, world that are praying together as we uh, pray about Chronicle 7, uh, 1 Chronicles 7.14. And um, so as part of that, we're also uh, going to be doing a fast on Monday. And um, you want to set that aside, mark that on your calendar for fasting on Monday. Uh, there'll be thousands of people that will be working together fasting on that day. I wanted to take just a second to ask you this little simple question, and, and maybe you was raised different than I was raised. I was, I was raised uh, a lot in the South, but in, and my, my mother's people were all from the South, and, and uh, manners was a really big deal. And, uh, and my parents oftentimes, when it was time to leave, would say, you know, you need to hug your grandmother goodbye or your grandfather, or give them a kiss or tell them you love them, or, or sometimes when me and my brother had had a little fight, um, you know, at the end after we got corrected and, and, and taken care of, you know what I mean, um, she would say, now hug your brother. And, um, you know, so you'd go through the motion, but you really didn't mean anything. You was just going through the motion so you didn't get no more tuning up. And, uh, or in like the case of maybe grandparents, maybe, uh, maybe you didn't want to get tuned up, so to speak. And so, so uh, you just simply gave him a hug. And uh, did, did you really mean it? Probably not, especially for the sibling. Um, how do you think it made them feel? Probably not too good. Probably didn't feel like uh, it came from your heart. And uh, they knew that you was just going through the motion. But um, Hebrews 12, 28 and 29, and I want to read this to you. It just simply says, therefore, since we're, we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. I was just reading that and I thought to myself, if there is an acceptable way to worship God, there is probably an unacceptable way to worship God. If there is a way that God enjoys, if there is a way that God receives, there's probably a way that he doesn't really like that well. And, and so I, I got to thinking about what worship does and, and how worship affects us. And, and worship should come from our heart. Worship should be something that is automatic, that comes back or automatic, that comes out of our, our being. And, and sometimes we spend too much time just uh, waiting for somebody to pump us and prime us to get us to worship. I see a lot of worship leaders and pastors, you know, and, and they're, they're trying their best because they know what response to God will do, but, but they're trying their best to get people to worship. And so they, they'll just be working themselves to death. And I wonder sometimes when people finally kind of get their hand out of their pocket or, or uncross their arms or get them off the back of the pew or the chair in front of them or wherever it is that they're worshiping, I wonder sometimes if God says, that's really not what I had in mind. I, I really wanted you to do that from down here. I didn't want it to be pumped and primed and cheerleaded out of you. And so I, I got to thinking about what does the result happens when there's acceptable worship. And I, I found over in Second Chronicles chapter 20, uh, verse 18, it says, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping God. Now, now God had just told them, they were surrounded by some armies, and God had just told them, listen, if you will just stand still and worship me, I will take care of everything for you. You don't have to worry about nothing. When God told them this, 
Jehoshaphat immediately got on his hands and knees and bowed down before God. And it goes on to say that, verse 19, and the Levites and the children of the Kohathan, Kohathanites and the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. So what I see is I see people bowing with their face to the ground. I see people standing with their voice loud. <laughs> Folks that don't like loud church, this is going to be hard to swallow right here. But, but they stood with their voices loud. They, they got up and they did something that was uh, moving. And so it really doesn't matter whether you're on the ground bowing on your knees or whether you're standing worshiping. What makes the difference is if it's coming from inside your heart. See, the Lord didn't say for them to start worshiping. He said, stand still. But they understood the power of worship. And the scripture goes on to say that as they began to worship, that verse 22 says, and when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Matter of fact, if you read a few more verses, the scripture says that they turned on one another and they begin to destroy each other. I'm telling you, pure worship that comes from your heart is powerful. I believe that today, that if you'll begin to worship God and if you will begin to lift him up, you might get on your knees and bow your head and touch the ground. That is beautiful. I love that. You might stand up and raise your hands and, and, and begin to worship God. You might cry. You might laugh. You might, whatever it is, it's coming out of your heart. But what I think worship should be is something that humbles you and exalts God. It'll humble you and it'll exalt God. I'm always a little nervous about gospel songs, no matter what genre they are, if they are about making you feel like you're something super special. Those are okay every now and then. But I'm telling you, there's something about a song that makes God be who he is and you recognize that God's in full control. Somebody said to me today, uh, Brother Crum, I'm, a, I'm, I'm afraid. I understand that we live in, in distressful times. But what I want you to know is that when you begin to worship God and get him in his right position, all the problems that we're dealing with today will suddenly melt down and come into the right place. I love you guys. I challenge you to use this. I hope this drops something in your spirit. Share this video with somebody. We love y'all. We'll see you in the morning. God bless. Bye-bye.